Hey, welcome to Mitten Music. We are here with Haskins in beautiful downtown Plymouth. <laughs> did you just introduce yourself? I did. <laughs> I'm also a part of Haskins. <laughs> <laughs> there. <laughs> Is this a podcast about playing music wearing mittens? That's what I thought it was now called the High Five Music Podcast. Oh, there you go. I look even better. Take two, High Five <laughs> Mitten Music Podcast. That was beautiful, guy. Thank you. Jeff, Ryan, we are in Plymouth. We are. We're in Plymouth, Michigan. I think I've only been here maybe one other time in my life. And you grew up not too far away. Uh, remember the drive? It took an hour. But it's 32 miles from his where we stayed last night at his parents. An hour and what? Hour and something. Just over an hour here. to get down. What, what cr- city? Oxford. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a nice drive, though. Like, I'm used to, you know, the west side. It's like 30 minutes. Oh, you can go, like... 45 miles in 30 minutes, or yeah. let's say 30 miles you can do in 15 minutes right. some places. Oof, not yeah. on this side. It takes a while to get to no, Oxford. Double that time on, uh, you know, a Monday afternoon. Oh, I bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's quit. Before we get started, let's go around the room this way. Just introduce yourself and what you do in the band. All right. And anything else you want to add. It's all good. All right. Well, I'm Jeff Carpenter. I play bass in the band Haskins. I'm Guy Vendatelli. Yeah. I play guitar and I sing some songs in the band. Haskins. Haskins. Yeah. Uh, my name is Justin Youngman. Justin, wait, what band yeah. are you in? Uh, Haskin, Haskins, okay. Haskins, 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 Haskins. It's pronounced Haskins. Pronounce it. We've changed it over the years, but uh, I am the uh, pretentious percussionist, or AKA drummer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Ken. I play guitars, and every once in a while they let me sing. Oh, every once in a while. Just once in a while. It just depends guitar. on the day. Don't sell yourself short. I'm Kevin <laughs> Haskins, and I play guitar, and I sing some songs in the Brothers Bilberry. <laughs> no, Kevin Bilbrey. Oh, right. I was just. I, I forgot. Say, Wait, that, is that where the name? No, came I from? forgot my crib notes. You maxed it up. Yeah, I'm Kevin. I play guitar and I sing some songs in Haskins. Yeah, Haskins. Where do you guys get the name Haskins? That's a Kevin. Oh, yeah, that's Kevin. Yeah, it's a Kevin question. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so uh, once upon a time, I uh, born and, and raised in Dearborn. Uh, went to school at the University of Dayton in Ohio. Go Flyers. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a girlfriend back back in Michigan. So I made a lot of drives up I-75. And it would always pass this sign, said Lucky Haskins. And I thought, if I ever had a band, man, it'd be the sweetest name in the world, be the the coolest thing. And it's two different towns. You go one way, it's Lucky, you go the other way, it's Haskins. So 15 years later, we have a band. We are Lucky Haskins. Well, it started out Lucky Haskins, Mm -hmm. right? It was was me, you, guy. Mm -hmm. Let me grab Justin. Yep. And then the exclamation point was Ken. <laughs> oh, how oh, honored! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. In between, we bought some. Well, mics. We, that's why we had to cut the le- lucky because we were lucky Haskins for a couple years. Right, new version. It wasn't the same thing when Ken came in. Right? Well, there was a couple well, bands that yes. were also called Lucky Haskins. It was a yeah. rockabilly well, band. Out of really? And, and yeah, we, right. had, we played at the Ark in Ann Arbor about in the summer. Uh, we did their art fair for Ann Arbor, yeah. and we played at the Ark. And the lady that was in charge of it insisted that we were this other band and we flat out told her we are not specifically not that band it's why we don't call ourselves that because they exist interesting and uh, they were rockabilly like like pretty big i guess in the local michigan scene they'd probably be on the music podcast in 1997 (laughs) Um, but but so we dropped it and yeah there yeah. were many discussions about changing the name of the band completely. Yeah. And I think that we couldn't agree on anything. So we yeah. finally just said, let's just drop the lucky and be happy. We well, the story went way different than I thought. I thought you were <laughs> going to say you were driving down. You kept seeing the sign and found out it was like a, like a strip club, like an old man strip club. <laughs> man, or something like that. That's a, better, like that. that's a better story. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, go, we'll go with that we'll one. Go with that yeah. one. I, most people that drive down 75 send me a text message of the sign. Oh, I get yeah, it really. five yeah. a year. That's like, funny. Here's that's the awesome. sign. Is it 187? Yeah. Well, Is it in Michigan or Ohio? Undercover Just cop. over. Yeah. It's in Ohio. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's but right by Bowling Green. But it's okay. interesting. About a third of our fans on Facebook just have the last name Haskins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's it's, yeah. They just like yeah. search Haskins and yeah. they're, you know, like, oh, so yeah. it's a lot of our fans all over the country are just because their last name is Haskins. That's, yeah. that's hilarious. <laughs> Maybe we could get some mitten music people with that last name as yeah. our fans. There you go. There you yeah, go. There you go. Seems like a good, easy way. Mm-hmm. I work with someone whose last name is Mitten Music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to share yeah. our socials with them or something. Yeah. What are the odds? <laughs> I only agree to do this podcast because my name is Mitten Music. <laughs> and so... I named my dog Mitten Music yeah. after your podcast, guys. Thanks. Yeah. That's great. So what have you guys been up to? What, do you, what? I guess but there's a million ways we could go in the direction of what we talk about. But 
I'll, I'll just kind of go off first. Yeah. What's been going on right now, like lately? What have you been doing? What are you working on? Or what is there a, a thing? I, I know you have a show tonight, mm -hmm. so that's a thing. Is there anything else in the atmosphere recently that's been going on, keeping you busy? Well, the biggest thing happening right now is that we've got our first vinyl record out. Um, we decided to drop. Yep, yeah, it's right over there. I saw, I saw that. We decided yeah. to drop the CD production. Um, people don't have CD players in their cars <laughs> right. or anything like that. So they buy vinyl. the vinyl they is buy a vinyl. huge, sure. you know, resurgence, and um, and that was kind of a big expense up front yeah um the plate that kevin loves to show everybody is you know getting it ready to go is the biggest expense yeah pressing one at a time now is is nothing comparatively so that was an obstacle to come over with and so we're just kind of releasing that tonight that's kind of a big deal for us Ooh. is uh to have that out and get those sold and getting them into people's hands yeah. how long did the process take to get the album because i hear that does it was forever because these months, these yeah. We recorded this record over a year ago now, um, so how long? I think we ordered the vinyl in like January. Wow! And that was picked it up in. A I think we picked it up in April? late June. Yeah. Four months. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. And then uh, we kind of summers are busy, and we didn't know when we were going to have them, so we kind of gave ourselves a big cushion to have the actual release. Interesting. Yeah. 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 That's cool. We've heard. We. I would say a good amount of the bands we've talked to have either had experience getting vinyl, their stuff on vinyl, or just got some, or always had some, but yeah, all similar stories. Like you don't know how long it's gonna take, right. especially post COVID, I feel like, mm -hmm. slowed yeah. a lot of things down, or it's all backed up. You know, they took an extra year or two to get stuff out that was submitted during COVID, but no right. one was there to- Even national bands. I was we, gonna I say, mean, yeah, we'll we come. Yeah, Dawes had the same thing happen. Um, there was like this, maybe it was the size it had, so it was a 10 inch record, so it was yep. unusual, but, I think I pre-ordered it and it showed up four months after it was yeah. released yeah. on Spotify and Dang. everywhere else. So yeah, supply yeah. chains are still having yeah. issues everywhere. So yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, right. Cool. Uh, so speaking of the, the record, um, how did you come up with the artwork? Because Jeff and I kind of yeah. were talking about it even before th this weekend. We've know you know we've listened to your music. We've talked about you guys a little bit, and we're like, what a cool! It's it's vibrant. It's cool. Like just the the grass on it pops. I don't know. How did you get the idea to do that? Well, th this would be, if we follow the nomenclature from the past releases, uh, this would be volume four. Mm -hmm. We decided to kind of keep that off this time gotcha. for many reasons, but every other volume had the Circle Haskins logo incorporated as, as kind of the mainstay. Yep. Uh, we wanted to do something a little bit different because this wasn't a volume. Uh, it was a little, little bit of a departure, but we wanted to keep the aesthetic a little bit. So yeah. I don't know who Ken maybe came up with the idea of the stump. Um, yeah, we, we've tried every circle thing in the world <laughs> with our yeah. logo and even yeah. thought about getting rid of it, but we wanted to keep it there. Cool. With the, um, and so the stump kind of, the rings of the tree and everything kind of resonated with the themes on the album and the stump gave us the circle and we have a very talented friend named Jason Allen that helps us with right. our graphic design yeah, and he made cool. it happen. He did a great job. Shout out to Jay. Yeah, I will say, it's like yeah. when we tried changing our name, you have five guys with five different opinions really selling anything artistic related, whether it be changing our name or, or picking what an album cover is going to be, there's going to be a lot of back and forth and compromise, right? right. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what we settled. I think we're all very happy with it, but mm -hmm. it took a little while to get there. Sure. To kind of everybody agree on one thing. Lots of designs. Yeah. Lots of stuff going back and forth. Anybody listening, um, if you haven't checked out um, Haskins on Spotify to see the album cover, if you're listening from our webpage, just scroll below and we'll have a lot of pictures showing a lot of the stuff we're talking about today. Yeah. Even pictures of the room we're in right now. Which, where are we guys? I, I know we're in an old school building. <laughs> yeah. What's it to you guys? What is this place? This is the largest historic building in downtown Plymouth. It used to be Central Middle School, which was part of the Plymouth Canton Community School District. And it was abandoned for a while. Um, and it was purchased by, I don't know what you would want to call it. A group them. of investors. Yeah, yeah so, mm -hmm. someone wanted to keep the, the, the building here instead of more condos and things like that. Yeah. And um, so if it's the Plymouth Arts and Rec Center and they've got everything going on here. Yeah. We've got people below us that are teaching fencing. Mm -hmm. The guy across the hall does driving uh, school. Driving yeah. school. The next door neighbors are teaching strings. They got kids in there playing violins right now, I think. There's a glass There's a dance, dance, yeah. dance, dance studio, studio down the, yeah. down the don't, hall. Don't forget the robotics club across, yeah, that's across right. the hall. Yeah. Yeah. But to us, this is home. This, yeah. I think yeah. this is the longest place we've, we've called home in our existence. We started when we started without microphones, without Ken, <laughs> and barely with Justin. Uh, we were in people's basements. 
We were packing up. We were setting up and packing up at the end of the night. We were transient for a very long time. We got lucky, and we've been kind of increasingly staying places longer. Uh, but we've been here for four, six years. Six years. There you go. Wow. wow. So it's like a club that. <laughs> right. And we've been at four of our houses at one point, and then right. that person had a kid usually. And then <laughs> yeah. go to the next place. Of you know, course. So that's, yeah. It's only so long before That's the downside of out. dad rock, right, is like uh, rehearsing on a Wednesday night when kids are trying to go to sleep. But, uh, right. For sure. So, so, we, so we pay, but we got 24-7 access. Yeah. We can comfortably be here. No families are involved and stuff like that. As, as long as, as we want. There's a mini fridge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the fact I heard that this building was abandoned has to mean it's also haunted, right? There's tons I'm of sure. stories. There's a staircase right here. Yeah. What'd they call it, the Schleider Stairs? Yeah, or some guy's Some name. guy's last name. Yeah. Apparently his ghost lives in that staircase oh, right there. Right. Yeah. It's, that's well, right next to you guys. He fell yeah. down the stairs and broke his neck, apparently. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's haunted by the ghost of this guy who we don't even know really ever existed? No, he yeah. definitely did. Oh, he definitely yeah, I, does I, I one time ran into a lady that was wandering these hallways, oh. and she, was, she wasn't a ghost. Are you sure? It's Halloween time-ish. I, maybe not, but this was her classroom. Oh, really? So she was oh. peeking in the window. I'm like, can I help you? And she's like, this used to be my classroom. And I brought her in here, and she knew all about the ghost story. Yeah, I know. Okay. And um, there's the other one was, who was with me when um, Christoph, the guy that used to be the building like manager here, he's a photographer in this building as well. Oh. He knew all kinds of stuff about tunnels that connect this building to the to like the city hall Get and out. stuff downtown. Wow. And they, they, some kid got trapped in there. What? And yeah, Holy like, well, I, I know what we're doing later. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hatson's working on our rock opera, and right. it's going to be about uh, ghosts <laughs> falling yeah. down stairs. Ghosts yeah. 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 Kind, of, kind of writes itself just being here. But I mean, just to give people a perspective, there's a smokestack on this building. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. how old it's this old incinerator. Right. right. Yeah. I think yeah. it's over. A, it's really a collection of like three buildings, but I think it's over 100 years old. Yeah, it was like 1890. I think the original building was. Built, okay. So. But part of the uh, part of the remit when they bought this place is they wanted to make it green, like as green as possible. Mm. And I think we saw a sign just the Being other day. Certified and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So they they've green really gardens. done a lot of work uh, to bring the community together. It's I love it here. It's great. That's cool. It's always busy. And they're full. When we got here, we were like the only tenant mm-hmm. on this floor. Mm-hmm. And now that every room is. It was probably more scary back then when you're the only uh, it one. It was. Here. Being yeah. here in the middle of the night. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the boroughs was scarier, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> building down the road, it was like gutted, empty. There was like, We were in an old office space from the 90s. There was still like uh, <laughs> Detroit, was the Detroit Red Wings stickers on the little whiteboard from when they won in 97. It's just abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. Just oh, abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. Dang it. Huh. Creepy wow. cool. Yeah, was, so it yeah. turns out abandoned buildings make very good practice too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. so you can get them cheap and yeah. yeah. This is and this is a, a decent, this is a very decent sized room. Like, this is bigger than I would have expected. This yeah, is cool. it's you, more room right. than we need, but now we have it. We probably we never want less. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, yeah. we always yeah. said we want room for podcasts. So right. yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> podcasts and lockers yeah. to put our stuff, <laughs> put our backpacks and stuff. When we yeah. come. <laughs> Can't fit the guitars in there though. Looks no, like, yeah. no, but the sweaters for the Christmas videos are in there. <laughs> yeah, so. and the Christmas decorations. Yeah. Yeah. Check Haskins out on YouTube. Which we haven't decided. That. Someone asked me. So we do an annual Christmas video and put it on YouTube cover. And uh, someone asked me yesterday actually what our next Christmas song is going to be. That's which we haven't discussed yet. That's what we'll oh. be working on next yeah. after this show. Yeah. Ooh, cutting down to the wire, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you've done it several times, you kind of. This will be our. You kind of know what you're doing. Tenth. I don't know. Oh, Eleventh. Wow. It's getting a little hard to keep wanting to yeah. do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, we should just sing, cap it with they run out a Christmas concert. I would yeah. love to play them all. I would love to do that. And then just I don't, I don't remember how to sign it off and don't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, but it maybe put it all on maybe. something, a, a playlist, yeah. or get all the recordings on Spotify yeah. or whatever, and be like that. There's an album. I mean, it's you don't done. have to print it or nothing. Right. But. Yeah. Doing That's covers, idea. Yeah. we usually dress Justin up pretty funny, like an elf or something. Prance around, whatever. So talk more about the show you have tonight. So this is your release for your album. Re- release party and the first time we've hosted okay. it. So it's it's our planning, right? Our We're not playing at a bar show where we just show up and so we're setting up and s- selling tickets and Great. we are the bar and selling merch. And so so in the building we're in, there's it's like a theater down there, right? Is yeah. That, yeah. That's what it appeared to be. Yep. yep. Completely revamped Wilcox Theater. The Wilcox right? Theater, Ooh. yeah. They spent yeah. a bunch of money on um, the, the Wilcox family is big in Plymouth. They gotcha. do a lot of philanthropy. Philanthropy, yeah. yes. Thank you for that word because I wouldn't know. <laughs> <asked. laughs> That's why um, I'm here. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, and they um, kind of saved a lot of stuff around mm-hmm. here. 
um, and that theater is named after them. And they exposed all the old ornate like framing around the, oh. s- the stuff. And there's state of the art play stuff in there for like lighting and theater sound and, and cool. um, symphony. The Philharmonic Michigan Michigan Philharmonic Fil- plays there, I think, weekly. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So, this that's is the sweet. first rock and roll show ah. that's ever been in this place. So, we're <laughs> right. popping the cherry today. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> Yeah, you guys were sound checking kind of and setting things up as we got in here so nice and early so we have all day to kind of tweak and yeah. this, that, and the other thing. That's a huge yeah. stage. Yeah, it's a yeah. Huge yeah. Stage. it was yeah. a big. That is the largest stage we Loud room. Yeah. Is, it, it, is it just you guys playing tonight? Anybody else? Uh, there's a band called Rhythm Shifters opening. Ooh, Rhythm Shifters. Yep, yep. They, uh, they make their mark by th- several of their players switch instruments mid-set. Oh, so wow. That's they, cool. The rhythm shifts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes That's sense. Interesting. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Cool little tag to that. Yeah, I like it. That's We've tried that. It didn't go very well. But, yeah. Well, Jeff and I used to be in bands. We'd have switch instrument time yeah. all the time. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So how long have you guys been together? We talked about, I mean, it's obviously quite a whip, quite a many years, right? Has that been 15? Ish. 20? Right around there. Uh, four of the five of us grew up probably two miles from each other. Oh, wow. Uh, Different schools and high schools, different crowds uh, would intertwine every once in a while. Um, So we've known each other. I've known Guy for 35 years, 38 years. Uh, I've known most of these guys 25, 20 years. Uh, Me and Kim knew each other sixth grade on. Yeah. And we actually learned guitar together. Yep, for sure. Cool. So I think the band got together in earnest in like 06. Not in earnest. That's the direct opposite, with, with no microphones. <laughs> yeah, we, you started the. It was before it that. Was born. I think. Yeah. Well, I think it was like oh five. It, we started. It's hard. You and guys started playing. It's we hard were to recording have... demos with a mini tape recorder up in the rafters. <laughs> in the yeah. basement. awesome. And, uh, yeah. But you tried. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but but you know, we you, you grow from there, right? You get a drummer. You get some microphones. I think meeting Justin was probably what. And Ken. Made I mean, it, when yeah. I, I met. Kevin and I were uh, hanging out at a mutual wedding. I moved over from the west side of the state. And you know how it is with musicians. It's like, oh, I play guitar. Sweet. I play drums. We should, you know, I moved over here. I wasn't playing with anybody. And so we should jam sometime. And brought his friend Guy in and his friend Jeff. And we played together, the four of us, for a couple of years in some basements. And then it was actually, I think, Jeff, your bachelor party was at Lions game. We met Ken. Yeah, I, met that's Ken right. the, I met Ken for the first time. And Ken right. plays guitar. And Jeff and Ken have been in a band previously. And so when Ken, before we were kind of just like improv jam band kind of thing. And then when Ken came in, he's like, let's actually like write songs and be a band. <laughs> and that's when that started. And that was 12 years ago about, about, cause it was like um, 2010. Yeah. Cause yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that because we started out pressing in my basement and when my wife got pregnant with our first child, who's going to be 12 in December, we moved out. So that's kind of the timestamp is like mm-hmm. when we moved out of my basement, that's kind of where we started. So being together now as a band for more than a decade, uh, you know, covers come more net, come easier to us now, I think. Like, that we used to stress over a lot. Like, even the Christmas songs are just adding a cover to a set. And I think, like, it's it's more fun now doing covers. Even though we don't do that many, we usually throw one or two into a set. Um, and putting maybe a little twist on those, we have an easier time, I think. Well, we also, we, we take pride in not playing covers, too. Yeah. Sure. Right, like the, there are a lot of bands who are who are strictly cover bands, and right. they can go out and they can play for like four hours. Which is awesome, <laughs> easy way to start. Sounds right? super it's, fun, it's, actually. It, it, yeah, 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 is is great. It's, you get to get a lot of people to fill a lot of bar seats that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we love writing. We are we are five music snobs that have relatively different tastes in music. But when we all kind of come together, it just feels sounds right. It sounds good. Uh, so we really we really love playing that 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 new. Solo, not solo music. What I, I don't even know what you call that, but original, original. Yeah, yeah. yeah and original finding music. venues that'll host a band to play an hour of original music on a Saturday is not always easy, no. right? Yeah. I mean, you it's know, even in harder Australia, and harder. Right, it's becoming yeah. harder. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's been a challenge to us, and we're not gigging out on Tuesday nights, right? So, yeah, yeah, you know, right. So you uh, and that ship sailed for us 15 years ago, <laughs> but, um, which I always joke about. It's like we probably started this band like 10 years too late, yeah. but um, but you know, we've, we've had some places that have had us back several times. Ken mentioned the Blind Pig, which is one of our oh, favorites. Yeah. Uh, so they've been very supportive and a couple of their local places. A place we used to play in Plymouth closed down mm. uh, a couple of years ago. We played there several times, so we lost that place. We probably COVID played casualty. 15 shows at the Yeah, like and that was a COVID show. kind of thing. Yeah. Shut down after COVID, couldn't make it. So, um, you know, always trying to find new places to play in Metro Detroit. And uh, So we have our own party. We made our own this time. So Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah. yeah, you're right, though. Like, cover bands, 
you know, they can fill a room, they can bring in, and they probably make more money than a, the, uh, a band that makes their own music. Hundred yeah. percent, right? And I get why they do that, but yep. it, it is. I I love like, I'd rather you hear original music, something new. Yeah. But but your your vast audience is gonna want the things they know. We well, throw a bone to folks. We're playing hmm. two. Two tonight. Three. 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 You got three, three covers. Never there? played three, three covers. Yeah, this is our most. It's all, also one of our longest sets we probably played. But um, Spain. There you go. The other interesting thing about choosing covers, right, right, is choosing covers that people know, right? We're, mm-hmm. we're, we're kind of indie rock fans and stuff. It's like, well, if you get too obscure, it's like, well, then no one's yeah, going no to know, cover. know it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. There's so. Sometimes there's a benefit that, to that, though. Like we, sure. played, we played Black Gold by Houndmouth like seven, eight, nine times. Like, I don't know. We played it. It was part of our set. Was, yeah. And people don't even know Houndmouth, really. So it's kind of our song at that point. Yeah. You know, like, not that we're... We're not pretending it's ours. Yeah, for sure. But if you play something that's super well known, like when we did Hello by Lionel Richie, <laughs> played it like a 197. Hello? Yeah, it, it was pretty awesome. We had a disco ball going at the yeah. blind pig. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny as hell, but like you can't pull that off every yeah. time you play yeah. it. gets, right. you know, right. it's, yeah. it's stale right away. Yeah. Too gimmicky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. After you it's do funny it once. once. Yeah, Correct. it's a one, I, one and done kind of thing. I and agree. choosing that's covers that fit our style, people are like, oh, they could have wrote that song. I mean, it fits our yeah, set, yeah, right? So it's like... Yeah. Unless well, it's Lionel Richie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, how would you describe your sound? Like, I, I feel like I listen to a band and I can describe sure. a million, like, th- the ways I think of it is always differently than what the artist is like. Well, yeah. I never heard it's, that before. Yeah, yeah but, right. You know, I'm a unique ear listener. Like, I, I don't know. I just have ideas about it. But I love asking the band, and maybe it's a little cliche to ask you, hey, what do you sound like? Yeah. But yeah, that's just like the number people, one question when people say it, you're in a band. Yeah. 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 What kind of music do you yeah, what, what, is it, what is it like? And We're uh, used to it. We just. I don't want to answer that. But that's why um, I like asking how do you describe it because it, yeah, you could right. go up yeah. so many different ways. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's subjective, right? So it's so at me. rock and what, what, roll, Americana roots. Those are, I like those words. I mean, that's, it's a little more electric, a little in between there. So folk rock Not as seems like it's a kind of a emerging genre that yeah we, we teeter on that too a little bit like um, southern rock we do some harmonies southern. i think that's part of our one of our staples, i think right? that's what harmonies. one of the when we finally started hitting a groove and learning how we were gonna i don't want to say we identified a, a sound because honestly i don't think we intend mm-hmm. yeah, i think we just no do and then that's what it sounds like and if we like it we stick with it fair we yeah. are probably not skilled enough to be like let's go make a disco record we right. couldn't do that right. like we wouldn't even know what to do like we so we play music that sounds like the music we listen to so rock and so rock so and that's roll. probably a good point. Yes, yeah, yeah. but rock and roll so so broad. Mm. Yeah, so what are your influences? What do you guys listen to? You will or, hear a lot of '90s rock and grunge. Yeah. So that's yeah. That, when when Guy and Kevin aren't here, the three of us get excited. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because we'll just play Pearl yeah, Jam can, yeah. and Nirvana. <laughs> we like, grunge like, night, right? We just yeah, yeah. we play like we're a three piece like blues rock grunge band from yeah. the '90s. But yeah. like yeah. Kevin and Guy right. kind of add more of that, you know, harmony folkier side, mm-hmm. pop side. So it, it, that's kind of our blend. It's kind of this grunge yeah. meets kind of pop folk harmony thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so. But I think Wilco is a universally a huge, loved universally band. Oh, yeah. Dawes. We love like Dawes. 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 Mouth. We mentioned. Mouth. So. It's a, a Michigan band called Michigan Rattlers. Oh, oh yeah. 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 So Rattlers. Rattlers. We all love Rattlers. Who just mm-hmm. announced they're playing the Ann Arbor Folk Fest. I don't know if I talked to you guys Pretty about Pretty freaking huge. Yeah. 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 Yes, I'm there. Good that's for sweet. them. American Aquarium. Yeah, mm-hmm. you are on late, late, to, late to that ship, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> American Aquarium, and that's a country band, right? American yeah. Aquarium went from oh. they're named after Wilco. 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 I'm an American Aquarium drinker. They're named after that, and they sounded a lot more rock and roll in their early records. The later records are a little bit more '90s country sounding. <laughs> and <laughs> but, circling back to Americana yeah, roots, right? I mean, that's exactly. country right yeah. there. And yeah. you look at bands like uh, Zach Bryan now and Tyler Childers. Like that's, I mean, they're they're like big. I mean, that's a, yeah, they're big. Right, they're right. selling out arenas, and it's like, that's pretty borderline country, you know, folk mm-hmm. right. kind of, right? Yeah, so for sure. it's cool that that's kind of really mainstream now, which is, you know, pretty new to music. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, country's blended with pretty much everything mm-hmm. now at this point. Or Took a while. Which but, style yeah. of country do you like, right? Like which form of country? Country. Right. There's so many Outlaw different. Outlaw country. Country. Right, 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 right. Like, yeah, I like pop bo- country. Or, I like right. both styles, country and western. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> no, we get. It's funny. Western. It's funny though, because none of us are really country fans per se. Yeah. But yeah. There, there's that twinge of that for whatever reason in our music, and that, I don't know where that comes from. But 
Uh, if you listen to it growing up and you were forced sure. to, it's still in there. Yeah. My, well, Maria has backseat of my mom wife, and dad's car. You know, <laughs> my wife does this trick where you can turn on the Sirius XM. Uh, what is it called? Country? I don't know. It's a country yeah. station on there. Like, but it's the '90s country, and these songs play that I have never heard in my life. And she can sing every word. <laughs> and I, my whole entire family, everyone's like, what the hell? Where did this, who are you? Where did this yeah. come from? She doesn't, so it's, you're right. Like if you yeah. grow up with it, it's yeah. it's there. And I think a lot of people did, but I don't think any of us have that. I, I did not know. grow up yeah. with country no. music at all. No. Zero of it. It was the oldies, you know, Beatles yeah. and yeah. that kind of stuff is mm-hmm. what I grew up with. Interesting. Who, so speaking of like the, your influences and stuff, and we just talked about different kinds of shows and this and that. Who's been a band? Who's your, I don't want to say favorite, who is a band that you really enjoyed playing with a show somewhere, whether it be oh. local, somebody local, or a friend band that you got, or maybe it's somebody bigger. I have no idea. But So I honestly think the most fun I've ever had was with those kids we played with <laughs> yeah. in December. Yeah. Yeah. What were they called? Uh... Violence. Fictional violence. Fictional, Fictional violence. 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 Yes. violence. Fictional violence. Fictional yeah. violence. From Oxford. Yeah. We've actually from played. Band. They're from they're Oxford. Oxford. They're yeah. kids. Yeah. They're literally. They don't. They, they were high school, high school, school. Like they're high yeah. school yeah. kids. Yeah. And um, my nephew had this party where we played, and they played as well. And um, we needed an opener for the Blind Pig. It was our show, and it was sounded like a, a an idea. Like maybe we'd invite these guys Ooh. to come out. Like they they weren't. It's their big break. I don't know how else to describe it. They they don't play shows and stuff like that. It's just a blind pig, but okay. And they were the most excited I've ever seen. Super energetic. The, energetic. And, and they brought and their fans a ton were of people. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All their Sweet. parents. We had 150 people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All their friends were there. And the Legit. time. Yeah. The time difference was between we played them the first time. They were just graduating high school. Uh-huh. Yeah. To I guess fast forward like six months. Yeah. And they were just all, like, freshmen in college. So they kind of all got back together to like rehearse and play the show. So it was kind of a reunion of sorts for them too. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I would agree. That was a very. Fun they show. had so much fun that mm-hmm. the just I didn't even care what they were like. They they're good. Good yeah. too. They're yeah. pretty good. I bought their and, T-shirt. Yeah, 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 yeah. and just, it was just fun. the most fun yeah. by far. Just the energy that they had. They're singing all of our words to our songs, and oh, that's in awesome. the crowd yeah, that's, raising their fists. Yeah. I'm like, they, yeah. most of our fans are 40, and they're not doing that. <laughs> Get a head bob. We're tired. Yeah. Yeah. We're so tired, dads. <laughs> how, how was the writing? You guys talked about you know your musical snobs. Let's say so. The writing process. What's what? Do you, what's your influences, or how do you guys go through the I guess from the music standpoint as well as the lyrics. I'm always interested. Is is lyrics a big thing, or you guys just add that in at the end? Like some people I know they fill that in with humming or whatever they yeah, make yeah. up with. Or they make it. You guys write along with music. Uh, all of the above. Mm-hmm. So we we do it all all kinds uh, all kinds of ways. Um, but I will say that lyrics are very important. They're a sticking point to this band. If they don't sound right. If they don't feel right, we, we don't do it. We go back to the drawing board. Um, most of the time, somebody or somebody's will come in with an idea, uh, like a bit or a piece or something, uh, and get some guitars around, get some acoustics flying, and just kind of feel it out. To Justin's point earlier, we've all got some different styles, and everybody brings something to the table. Mm-hmm. So songs kind of meld. I think the earlier one's probably a little bit more... Uh, we were we were more involved as a band in the writing process, I think, a little bit earlier. Um, it's it's kind of refined itself a little bit at this point. But um, we work and we work and we m- massage. And there are two songs on this new album that were probably started four years ago. Wow. It takes, it takes a while. Yeah. There's not a ton of production. So there's a song called Min- a- Minneapolis that went yeah. through... Oh, my gosh, yeah. We almost seven scrapped different it. Choruses. We almost yeah. scrapped it a couple times, wow. and it turned out to be one of the better songs it's on the, our album. Well, the lyrics for the album title come from that. It's the opening track. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, uh, we almost it just takes it. a while for us to... But it's also very yeah. like organic. Like we just yeah. kind of jam it and like, oh, this would be cool to this part. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, obviously the big part, especially as a drummer and, and Jeff agree as a bass player, but it's just the changes, right? So how do we get in and out of these parts? Right. right. That's usually the glue that holds the song together. So you know, stop starts and builds um, coming into a bridge, out of a bridge. So that's always the stuff that we kind of spend a lot of time on and figuring out just timing wise. And we record um, 
a lot off of our phones. We'll put a phone in the center of the room, yeah. and then that way we listen to it on our drives. Yeah. We listen to them while we're running. We'll mm-hmm. listen to it, you know, all this yeah. kind of stuff. And then ideas probably percolate once that's it. you're that's doing it. that kind of stuff. That's it. Hey, I got to change. Oh my God, this is the best thing in the world. Yeah. You know, yeah. get it down. Let's let's go. Let's move. Or even set it down for a while and come back months later on yeah. a different song and go, mm-hmm. this actually would fit here. Right. Yeah. So we just got stuff laying around there, ideas floating around constantly. And I always say it too, like these songs are like little babies. And you gotta raise them. Then they're children. Then they're teenagers. Sure. Yeah, they're never done, really. But uh, you know, they they feel done once you record them. Yeah. And for every song we finished or recorded, there's five others that we like right. started or couldn't figure out a chorus to this or you know. So it's like what sticks, you know. And that's good. You yeah. got a, a plethora sure. of material yeah. out there, things right. that yeah. you've parts and pieces you've created. We've got seven works in progress on here, and I can almost guarantee none of them are gonna make it on the next release. Uh, <laughs> maybe one. Maybe, maybe two. And maybe they yeah. all are. And I don't, I don't remember know, how to play probably three of those. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it usually starts with somebody has a chord progression and we come in and we play it. But yeah. when I bring stuff, it usually comes as singer, songwriter, acoustic guitar. And I have no idea what, yeah. what the it's guy be shows here. up with an entire song and a melody and everything, right? And he's like, I play, here's the song. And then we're like, okay, cool. And then we, can, <laughs> then we, then we, then we can, if he lets us, because yeah. he, te- he tends to, he tends to covet them a bit yeah. and, and hold them back. You do. I don't know if I want him all askinized all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Askinized. He's, he's saving his solo record right. for when you guys really pop. Yeah. yeah. Really... There's, I, I love it when uh, a, a song idea turns into a five piece band mm-hmm. uh, jam, yeah. right? Where everybody's playing and everybody's got a part and everybody is contributing something. That's, that's when it's cool. When we're not trying to fit it into making it a Haskins song, but when it feels like, mm-hmm. yeah. That organic process. We let it happen. I mean, at the end of the yeah. day, to answer the question, we just kind of let it happen as it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. For like There's it's really cool. three people that write, the, that bring the ideas to, to the band, and then, you know, how it goes from there, maybe something, maybe nothing. If it catches fire, it does. If it doesn't, and that's fine. Different we, ways, yeah. different reasons, right. different mm-hmm. things happen. It's one of my favorite things as a drummer, too, is when you guys will bring something and we'll play it. I can just see it in your faces. Like, oh, this is cool. Like, this is yeah. kind of either what I had in mind or maybe it wasn't, but it's you know made a cool turn. So I can imagine having that seed to germinate mm-hmm. and then bringing it to everybody and then having it realized, like, it's cool to see, I can yeah. see it in your guys' faces. Like, it's cool to see it become a song a Mm -hmm. rock song you know right we're having trouble with one right now that i think is probably one of the cooler musical pieces that we have but there's no melody and no vocal there's Mm -hmm. no lyric and as cool as it is we're talking about the you know the we, we call it fucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. It yes. was took me. I didn't know what else to yeah. refer to it. But yep. like it rocks. We jam mm-hmm. it out. It sounds great. We, and the hardest thing I for me is to backload a melody and lyrics into that. I want that to be the way I kind of write initially is to put that first because then I can change it any way I want. I'm gonna go high, low, whatever. This all works. But now we have this thing that sounds great, and it just takes a minute to. Uh, sorry. You gotta you gotta um, write around it. Yeah, yeah. Right around it's, it's yeah. you're pigeonholed into this gotcha. cav. It, even so, on Monday it might happen. We got something. We got one part of it sounded mm-hmm. pretty good. So, but and it might sit around for a while, like one of those we shelf for a little bit, and then something pops yeah. when we bring we've done it back that out. right. Yeah. Come back to it. Oh, yeah. it's like all right, we've well. done that many a times. Yeah. Minneapolis. I do. But, uh, you guys got a lot. A lot you're, you don't do it one way. It no. doesn't sound like. And, no. and I've heard you know just through documentaries or interviews I've heard with bands you know like. Dave Grohl, for example, comes to mind where he was talking about his first record he made all by himself for the most mm-hmm. part. And he's like, I, I had, you know, this idea for a song. Like, he hadn't written anything yet. He just had, he wanted to make a song that sounded like this. And it's like he already had it in his head and he created it with his hands and his instruments. Mm-hmm. Like, that's an, that's an, in, like, almost, yeah. I don't want to say savant way of doing it, but that's a particular way of, you yes. hear something in your head and you were able to translate it to all the instruments yeah. all by yourself. To That's take that amazing. Amazing. It's bonkers. To take right? that, amazing. I wish that we story could... a step further, Ryan, you know, he actually, when he got a drummer to record it, he, he didn't like it. He had, and he actually yes. scrapped the whole drums and that did it he himself, hired this right? guy and did it himself, yeah. right? So, which that guy never forgave him for, but whatever. <laughs> uh, he is Dave Grohl, so he can do that. But yeah, Absolutely. so your point, it's like he already had it inside. It's like, well, if someone else doing it just didn't work you know it was like and there's other bands like it like somewhat you do a part of your process like kind of get together and everyone kind of adds a piece in it yeah. organically something just happens whether it takes years or weeks months whatever like it kind of just 
figures itself out in the moment. Mm-hmm. And maybe it wasn't a preconceived notion, or maybe just little pieces were preconceived. But yeah, it's cool that you kind of you kind of have everything all over all over the board. I mean, that's I, that's why I'm here. Why, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? I, I'm here to be part of a, an experience and part yeah. of a group and, and part of a. Not to show off. Yeah, there's no pressure to hurry up and write a song either. We're not professionals and we have to release yeah. this album right. next year yeah. or whatever. Budget. It's all fun. It's all because we love writing music. We love playing music. Playing, playing live is awesome. Writing music and then doing it with your friends that you've yeah. known forever. Yeah, It's a really unique and awesome situation. And let's uh, let's give it up for the wives and the families who let oh, us yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I huge. mean, you know, so, we don't. We don't take advantage of it, but they've all been really great to let us kind of spread our wings with the, with the band. One of these buttons has like clapping hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just didn't know oh, what the button nice. it was. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Like, oh, I'm gonna hit the wrong yeah, one, yeah. Wah, and it'll be like, wah, wah. <laughs> we'll do, we'll do it. Yes. <laughs> well, it's fine with Jeff. And well, I, I know that was that noise because <laughs> that's what I use at Jeff. All the time. When Jeff and I were talking about doing this podcast, I'm like, well, you know. If you want to talk to guys who are dead rock, I mean, that's us, right? I mean, yeah. we all have day jobs and Quite families. And yeah. literally. So, you know, but we're still doing it and creating music and putting out, you know, EPs. And so um, there's a space for bands like us, I think. You know, we're not we're not the young, like, super hungry, do, gigging out, you know, four times a, a week and practicing every day. But we practice once a week. We play a show. We try once, twice a quarter, maybe three, four shows a year at this point. Um, yeah. We're in the right cool. place, Jeff. And then, and then at some point... I mean, your kids are going to grow up, and, and then if you guys are still a band, you guys can still be rocking out at yes. 55, 60. Yeah. And all I don't that. know that we'll ever not be a band. Honestly, yeah, we might yeah. not have a space like this that makes sense for us to rent and all that, but there's we'll, we will definitely be 60 years old and playing yeah. songs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We could rename – this could be the Dad Rock Podcast. Dad Rock. <laughs> I, mean, I, feel like, I feel like we, we are. this is a Dad Rock Podcast. Yeah. To, nice. It's my interpretation, and, and not just you know, Kevin. Give a shout out to our families, but our friends who support us. I mean, yeah. I'll be honest, we don't yeah. have like this huge following, right. you know. Yeah. But we have yeah. five guys with a lot of friends who support us. I mean, they come out to our shows. You know, we're expecting over 100 people here tonight. Um, you know, we couldn't do this without them either. I mean, we could. It just wouldn't be this fun, much fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a party tonight, right? Yeah, 100. Yeah. percent Yeah. yeah. You, once a week, you guys do rehearse. Mm-hmm. So I was just trying to figure out how you guys balance mm-hmm. life and, and well, the band. One of the things about having this place is that we used to st- used to come over for dinner when we were in my basement like every day at like 5.30, and then we start at like 7. Mm-hmm. And now we get here around 8, and we're here till 1 in the morning because yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter that we're here and we're not bothering anybody, except for the lady that threw snowballs at our window. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but... Yeah. The window was it open? I think we had a so did not open. like that yeah, noise. No, no, huh? no, no, it was winter no. and the the thermostat was broken. It was hot, yeah, and well. so we were rocking out a little too late for the dog walkers. And they <laughs> yeah. let us know. She waited until we finished the song to yell at us. <laughs> yeah. so. She had to. It was yeah. too loud. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't hear her. We tried. Well, and as our kids get older, yeah. we have a little more leeway, right? So it's you know, bath and bedtime and all that. It's yeah. not as much heavy lifting, right? So. You know, it gets a little more flexibility and freedom as the kids get older, right? I mean, where they can put themselves to bed or, you know, bathe themselves, right? So we have (laughs) less responsibilities at home as they get older, and that's helped us for sure. I was going to say that uh, you could probably track writing credits through the four LPs by who's got young kids. Yeah. Oh. Because you probably don't. You're not as involved in the writing or you don't have as much time. Your efforts are, are, you know, have to go to other places. So One of the truths of this band is that when we have... Uh, uh, some our sights set on something. There's a, a date. There's an objective. Mm-hmm. There's a show. That's there's a this, deadline. There's a deadline of some sort. Then we get way more fo- focused. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, and when that's not around, there it's might just, only be four of us here this yeah. Thursday. And oh, uh, you know, I just I'm gonna watch football tonight. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Yeah. That doesn't happen. But yeah, when we have that, it it, it gives us a little bit more focus because this isn't our day job. It is our hobby, and mm-hmm. I don't think a record company could buy us at this point. Like I don't know what would it. Their rookie contracts would not Hold fulfill up. what we would need for yeah. sure. Like that's not even I'm not a leaving my career. No, like yeah, yeah like yeah. Uh, yeah, no, no thanks. I'm gonna keep doing my job and making that money and yeah. not going around the world <laughs> or <laughs> country or whatever. Haskin, yeah. Haskin gets we great. wouldn't even want. We one. get pretty quiet in the summer yeah. because you know mm-hmm. five guys, family vacations. Right. You know, right. Ken's a teacher. Yeah. Uh, you know, guys married to one, so it's like could, couldn't be on the road. If you, you don't want to be a casualty of rock and roll. No, yeah. no okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like, yeah, casual, yeah. You don't want to be a casualty of rock and roll. Ooh, that might be the tagline for this episode. Yeah, yeah. stole those. Hey, yeah. Yeah. those that's lyrics were stolen. Yeah, that's yeah, our opener that's, tonight. Yeah. So. 
That's great. I like it though. Well, Tongue in cheek by Jeff Carpenter there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. So you you guys, if I'm thinking back, 2008, 9, 10, that area, you guys are getting together. You're getting some stuff together. Can you see a big difference from back then? Let's say I don't know when the your first song you actually fully put together, and you're like, this was our first written song, and then maybe you record it. Where I don't know how you put that song out into the world. Was Spotify available at the time no. or streaming? Pro- I feel like 2010. I remember getting a Spotify subscription roughly 2010, 11, 12, but it was not popular. Like yeah. bands were not putting their own music on there. It was like you know, yeah, I could go check out Smashing Pumpkins or Tool on Spotify, mm. but there's no way I could you know a local band that I knew in Michigan I couldn't find on Spotify. There was hardly anywhere to go find them unless it was they had a website. And they had a CD like yeah. at a store still, really. Yeah, I remember we had Bandcamp, I think, at one point. Yeah, band, yeah. that was band, that was probably was probably the first four way yeah. for yeah. Mo- like smaller bands. We're to dating do ourselves now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all. Good. Well, it was that, and then SoundCloud. I don't know when SoundCloud Sound, came out, yeah, SoundCloud. but we did use yeah. that. Early. We used, we used that a SoundCloud lot. more of to write communicate yeah. internal. We could yeah. put little marks on the timeline of oh, what okay. we wanted Make to do here, and interesting. And we did a lot of that early on. We don't do that anymore, but that was helpful. To get work in in between Thursdays, you know, yep. and and look at stuff like that. But yeah. we sold out of our first CD for that reason. People had CD players. People right. bought them. Like yes. we don't have any more of those. Those are gone. I feel like and 2012, right around there, is when cars started just not putting them in as an yeah. option. And kind of like right. they take the headphone jack out of the phone and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Like yeah. these days, that's the equivalent. Yeah. Right. I remember the third LEP. We were talking about. Do we we're not we don't want to do CDs. We're certainly not doing vinyl. It's too expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about just doing like a QR, like almost mm-hmm. like a business card, yeah, right. a business yeah. card code. To I still sell think people. CDs should be our business cards. Yeah, yeah. I think well, I think that people argument can use won. them as coasters. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't care. <laughs> I think that argument won the decision. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the coolest yeah. things for this band too has been recording. Right. I mean, I think yeah. that that experience. Uh, when we first did it, uh, which is unique. I mean, a lot of people don't get that opportunity to kind of go in a studio and just see all the tech and how that all works. Yeah. As being big music fans and really yeah. just then getting to do it and seeing it even on a small level. We've upped the ante with everyone, sure. too. Yeah. I mean, our first, yes. we went to Kalamazoo just to double Felix. They're not around anymore. They were like a collective. I think we paid $500 mm-hmm. for two full days two of full their days. studio. Yeah. and. And that didn't come with a lot of post production. Mm-hmm. It was no. there's even one guitar well, they solo on there. Two guitar solos. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, but so they uh, and then the next one we went back there, mm-hmm. but that we we got some more time. They and mastered. We did, it. Yep, they did some more mastering. They got some upgrades, and now we record at the Plymouth Rocks uh, Recording Company okay. down, down here and. That's a pro studio. And yeah, it's, awesome. it's a real deal. We love it. Yeah. I think yeah. that's a question that often comes up in interviews, specifically with bands, is where you've recorded some of your stuff. What are your favorite things about recording? Mm-hmm. And yeah, how you just went about that. It sounds like you guys used a couple different places, yeah. which is good. And then a lot of bands do that. You know, they they know someone or they have a connection. They go to one recording studio of some kind. They have an experience, whether they like it or not. And they might decide the next album, maybe they really liked everything that happened, but the next album's maybe got a different feel for some reason and they want to go a different direction for yeah. whatever that reason is. The reasons are interesting to me. Like, I like knowing about that stuff. Um, and maybe in, in this case, you know, a lot of times when it's your beginning, it's the money. Like, how I, we just need yeah. the cheapest place we can go right, right, record yeah. something. And time, too, right? Yeah. So we yeah. talked about having families. It's like, you know, we would love to go into a studio for a week and experiment and do right, stuff, yeah. right? When we go into the studio, it's like two full days and just banging out the songs we have that we know back and front. And We're like, locked and right. loaded. Yeah. We yeah. spend months rehearsing yeah. those five, yeah. six songs, and you go in, and I think it's all instrumentals the first day and yeah. overdubs and vocals the second day. That's a genuine plan. We play yeah. them live. Yeah, live. We, we, get as much as we record can. the drums and bass yeah. drums the and first bass day, first. Mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. everything else just kind of built on Layer top of on. that. Yeah. The, yeah. the coolest part is the station, right? You have a headphone on, and you mm-hmm. can change your personal mix. You can turn yourself up. You can turn... Different things down, down, get it I turned dialed Jeff, in. Jeff down. Yeah. Down. down. Yeah, which one are you? Yeah. Down. <laughs> that's but awesome. yeah, that's that's sweet because that gives us the ability to to lock in on what we're playing while everybody else is doing it. And I think with like this, right here. this last one uh, it was the first time we went back an extra day to do some minor stuff. And I think it shows. I think to your point, Ken, this is the best produced. Yeah, we probably put double the amount. Well, there's more songs too, but we we probably went back three times to that studio after the weekend for a 
four or five hours of in an evening and we recorded be ready um a, which is just an acoustic song all at night um on like a monday or tuesday and having that luxury which was awesome but studio time's really pricey. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's like seventy-five bucks an hour, hundred bucks an hour, or whatever. And please buy our albums. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. Sure. but we are very self. Obviously, right. indie rock we're self-funded. But right. usually, right. our gig, you know, we'll you know we put it out on them maybe two years. So when we gig, all that money just goes into a bank, and most yeah. of that covers our recording costs. That's yeah. kind of been our cadence. Is yeah, that's just live. You know, just everything goes back. Yeah, to if the we band, can keep that going for as long as we can, to yeah. where it, we can get self whatever yeah, we self sell. We sell T-shirts. We sell yeah. this. We make money playing this show. No one takes that home. No, ever. Yeah. Not a dime yeah. has ever gone. I've home. been hearing more. We heard more right and more of that in. bands. It's smart. It's yeah. a smart idea to, you don't just take it home and spend it on whatever. Right. <laughs> I mean, when someone, on, when one of on. listeners of your podcast decides they want to, you know, pay twenty thousand dollars to use yeah. bells in a major motion oh, yeah. picture or something, yeah. they go right ahead. <laughs> yeah, we're all down for that. I'll probably take a couple bucks. Maybe a, <laughs> maybe a beer <laughs> commercial, a beer yeah. commercial, yeah. bells. Oh yeah. I was gonna say, hopefully, no one has like a. Crazy heroin addiction. Yeah, yeah. Right. siphon it off, buddy. Right. <laughs> Not yet. Keep Not the yet. creative juices flowing. <laughs> No, but we've never taken a dime out of the band. Yeah, no one's ever made a no. dime in the ten years we've been playing together. Put it right back uh, in the studio, yeah. albums, mm-hmm. uh, microphones, Merch. Like whatever yeah. we need. Yeah, yeah. And you, you pay for this room that we're in, I would imagine. Well, that does come out of yes. our own pocket. So that yes. we do pay for. Yeah. That is actually yes, we do. That the band doesn't pay for that. That's the, the hobby the part, individual like putting yeah. your money right. into your hobby, which yeah, right. is good. We play. Yeah. We come up here and play darts sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Hey, don't tell dad man cave. Yeah, don't tell our wives about the rent thing. Yeah. Do you think anyone will listen? To yeah, that? <laughs> maybe. I, I was surprised. They'll say they listened. Oh, yeah, they, is that maybe they, they didn't listen to the whole thing? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll they're, see. There, there. I, I have people in my life that I'm they're like they. I didn't even know they knew I had a podcast, <laughs> and they'll question me about almost every episode. The next time, it like nice three episodes. I'm like, well, how did you know yeah. I even have this? Like, <laughs> yeah. well, I pay attention. You never said anything to me. Well, it's right. funny. It's great. It's just funny. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I'm like, oh, who's out there that's listening? I'm like, oh, I didn't want to listen. <laughs> there, I have zero of those people, so I'm not Care- careful yeah. what you say. Right? So, yeah, fair enough. So I'm a fan of your guys' podcast too, and you know, how you guys are very connected. You know, hooked into the music scene, especially in West Michigan. How? What are some resources you guys use for that? I mean, is it mostly just websites? Is it different social uh, media stuff? I mean, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Jeff is actually, shows. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of it's just, hey, we like this band, mm-hmm. and we're going to reach out to them. And that's been super cool. Like, so many people are open to, like, they just want to talk about what they do, right? Yeah. It's They love it. They're passionate about it. So it's been really easy to – and then as you as you talk to more people, they, they'll kind of give you insight. I mean, this – just I mean, yeah. this worked out great. Yeah. Like. You gave the connection, and we talked to, to Ava yesterday too, and and just um, yeah, just kind of just works out that the way. Music community, right? I mean, yeah, and it's I think right. the music community in Michigan is amazing. Like yeah. we keep finding more and more uh, groups, foundations, whatever they are, that are trying to make things happen, or just individual people. And I think what helped us at the beginning was of when we start talking about doing this podcast, it was like interviewing bands, interviewing bands, interviewing bands. And before we even started, I think we had the the smarts to be like, I think we should, it's, it's mitten music, it should be out, not just bands, but, you know, people that own venues, recording studios, you know, John oh, Sikovich, yeah. who, you know, is a big West Michigan, you know, Michigan Music Alliance, he's part of that, and he knows just everybody. That was he's, a great one, by the way, if anybody like, hasn't heard that one, I mean, that guy, yeah, yeah. literally so, he just knows. He had the stories yeah. about everything, know, from yeah. the back in the 70s yeah. and all this stuff, you know, he was, he worked for M Live yeah, and very cool. Um, Grand Rapids Press mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Right. So it's just knowing, yeah, those kind of people really, like, you kind of get on the radar, um, meet them, chat with them a little bit. They hear what you're doing, like, oh, that's exciting. And they kind of talk, like, you should go talk. I love it when they say, you should talk to this person, right. this person. I'm like, sure, yeah, mm-hmm. throw it on. But, yeah, like, um, Josh from Local Legends Recording Studio it, over on our side of the state. Like, that was such a cool thing. He owned his own recording studio or had bought out his boss, I think it actually yeah. happened. Yeah. But just a plethora of knowledge on a different scale outside of the band, so we could talk about technical things and microphones and the recording process right. and all that kind of stuff. Which bands can also, you know, talk about mm-hmm. that, but they're more interested in the music they're yeah, making right. and all that kind of stuff. So I'm glad we opened that. Up. It opened up a whole m- lot more discussion than just focusing on bands. Yeah. Plus, trying to get we were trying to get a band a month. After a while, that got that got hard. Yeah, it did. especially yeah. when you're starting out. And we you were just doing it as a hobby too, and you were yeah. just 
finding time with our families and everything. Dad pods. Fit it in, yeah. Yeah, dad pods. yeah that's a, yeah. Dad pods. <laughs> yep, dad pods. I like that. I gotta give. <laughs> speaking of which, like my oldest daughter, her bedroom is right next to our oh, yeah. studio in the basement where we do mo- a majority of our recording. So she has never once complained, never given us grief. <laughs> Ten year old Harper, awesome. You're the you're the oh, woman. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Sure. Yeah. So guys, what's uh, you guys talked a little bit about what's next. It sounds like album could come out at any point. You don't have an ad- agenda or timeline. You're working on music. That stuff's coming out. The big thing is the release of this album uh, in vinyl. Um, what else is going on, and where can they find uh, Haskins? Where can you find, like, where will they be able to find us in the future? Are yeah, or, or just the music. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're on all the major streaming platforms. Every major platforms streaming that, platform, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, in, you see your Apple Music and your Spotify and your Pandoras and all that have us everywhere. I've yet to see a TikTok with us in it. Yet. Oh, <laughs> I think we start making I believe TikToks? I believe we're on TikTok. I don't have a TikTok cuz I'm a grown man, but Jeff, didn't you just make us a TikTok? <laughs> yeah, maybe we can make a TikTok right now. Yeah. I guess we have to see if Haskins is on there. Facebook, never, yeah. Instagram, yeah. we do have a website. Yeah. Uh, linked music. on those. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel, which is super hard to find. I don't know why. There's a couple of them that yeah. were like auto-generated when we ordered CDs and they put yeah. us out. And so there's multiple YouTubes. But mm-hmm. oh, okay. But Apple Music and uh, and Pandora, not Pandora, Spotify, Spotify and the Google and, Play or YouTube yeah. Music. It is now. Yeah, yeah. we're pretty much yeah. there. And then. This guy's out, and hopefully by next summer we've got mm-hmm. enough songs to start thinking about round five in yeah. the studio. And we've talked about a full there. length too at yeah. one point, and we just haven't done that yet. But so good. what would what would be what? considered? I always I wonder that like the full length. So this album is your longest, right? Mm-hmm. Or most yep. songs, tracks, I guess, most yeah. tracks. Mm-hmm. So what would you consider a full length versus this album being? That you don't consider this a full length? It's close. I I don't it's call it an EP. Yeah. yeah, but it's. It's just a name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. rose by it's any other not name. Not yeah, yeah, I like sweet. that. It's a good attitude. It's got it's got two sides of the seven songs. So I mean, that's that could be an album. It it's you can call it that. I I call it that. But EPs were like four or five, mm-hmm. and even that even five is a little long for. I an just EP, feel like so. eight to twelve or fourteen is an album. You get more than that. Now you're talking about a double. But if you're double green, album. if you're Green yeah. Day and you yeah. play two minute songs, right. you need right. more it's than relative. five. Yeah, right. Good you know, point. so. Most of our songs are four to five minutes long. Maybe so. it's eight. Yeah, maybe but again, you know, time from and, the eight track. The last Dawes record has six. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. You know, time I mean, and money constraints, and you know, we usually knock it out on a weekend. We'll go all day Saturday, all day Sunday. So okay. you can only just record so many songs, right. even if they're tight and ready to go. And typically, that's been enough time for us to do four or five. Real old. This isn't yeah. a discussion the band's really had, but the way the music seems to be going, maybe you guys have insight onto this. It almost seems like it's smarter for you to release pairs of songs or three songs in more frequently than physical media, full length type stuff. It's probably Mm. smarter for us to release two or three songs this year instead of saving up nine for 2025. Mm -hmm. I I think we both have opinions on this because it's come (laughs) up. Yeah, I mean, my, I I mean, my, usually it's people are releasing one song at a time and then they build up to an EP or an album. Mm -hmm. So it, it all, and then they're just staying more relevant into the, getting their music out early and keeping it going. That's what I've seen. Do they record you? all at the same time, though? No, no. They're, yeah, okay. they're actually recording these, I think, individually. Yeah, and then okay. and they as they're di- done, they release. get studio time. So yeah. once again, it goes back to cost. And right. so they got enough time to get one or two yeah. songs in, and then they'll release a couple of them out over the next couple months. Or well, I, g- I gave that advice to Ava. You guys talked to her yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. She, she recorded four songs, and I'm like, don't just release them. Like, do one a month, and yeah. it just keeps you gives you reasons to to post because that's what it's clicks now right 2000 like and we wouldn't talk about this if it weren't for the streaming factor that's what i think that's what's pushed the release of fewer songs more frequently Mm -hmm. keeps you in what what do you want the spotlight or whatever but just keeps your name out there but before streaming was a thing like you you heard a song on the radio but when you heard a, a brand new single by a band on the radio, they had an album already. To, they were releasing yeah. singles off an album that was done and ready to be released. Yeah. yeah, it's just streaming transformed it all. Better or worse, I don't think it matters. It's just different. I think there's just so much more content out there. Mm-hmm. If you do wait for however long it take make an album or an EP, it. I guess I I would say maybe it is smarter to release fewer songs more frequently than save it up. Even if you if, have them recorded, yeah, it, you put them in the bank and you yeah. wait for two months and. If pop you're this one interested out. in how can I monetize like our music and what earn the most exposure, if you really don't care, it really doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. So it all kind of like what's your end game, and maybe you just get 
get more comfortable doing that. But I do. It seems like every artist is doing that. Yeah, we um, talked about vinyl. I mean, the resurgence of that, right? Yeah. So it's it's what a cool like dynamic where it's right. like yeah, everything's kind of singles and you know streaming, but. Every, almost every band nowadays would vinyl. love to or have put out vinyl, For right? Sure. And you right. can't do that without, you know, at least a handful of songs. Right, exactly. So, which it's, is awesome. Yeah, it's so cool. The artwork's got to be there. Yeah. People like holding right. something physical. Yeah. And 20 know. years ago, that wasn't a thing. It's like, yeah, yeah it's yeah. streaming came out and pushed it one direction, but we still are pulling back. Like, if we're going to buy physical media, yeah. we want vinyl. It's right. like, but that's the old, yeah. old, old version <laughs> right. of it. And if which you, it's, it's cool. If you just told somebody in the height of CDs that not only would people not be buying CDs anymore, they'd actually be buying more records. Right. No one would believe no, me in a million. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sure. no sense, For but sure. it's so cool, right? Yeah, right. it is. Because <laughs> how many people do you know who actually listen to albums front to back? I, like, I know we do, because yeah. we're music nerds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah. My wife People that doesn't grow or over the new album from it's playlists <laughs> yeah. and yeah, yeah it's just, like I like that song I'm gonna add it. I've even Correct. gotten mad at myself because Apple Music makes it so convenient for me to just click the my the playlist that it makes for me. Yep. Yeah, that I'm starting it's to realize that I it. don't listen to albums as yeah. much as I use. I only would listen to a whole album before. Now it's like mm-hmm. okay, just put some music on for me. I'm just getting lazy, right. but. uh yeah, if you're not, prone if you really to... dig a song, I just I find new music or just it'll play old mm-hmm. music that I already know and just I'm not thinking I even want to hear it. You'll hear that song and I'll just press. It makes it easy for you just yeah. press and go go to album yeah. and then I'm like I'm now I'm in the album. Yeah, 100%. but you got to you got to focus on it, right? Like yeah. you said, you, you got to try. You got to make like, sure eh. it happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, cool. That's good stuff, guys. We very much appreciate having us in your home here mm-hmm. to yeah. record. This has been great. We love coming up to the side of the state. We might do this more often. Yeah. Now that we do blitzes, yeah, we get, we had some practice this weekend doing some traveling and coming on site to everybody else instead of having people come to our spot. So we appreciate you guys and looking forward to Jeff's looking forward to seeing you play today. Yeah, I'm gonna stick around tonight. And watch oh. it. Unfortunately, I had a calendar issues and uh, my ten year old's actually turning eleven. Uh. She does it later this week, but her party was tonight, so I have to race home <laughs> after this after our stuff today and yep. get home for that. But. Sure. It's great. Yeah. Well, I can say that we don't generally like talking about ourselves, but I, this is great. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a good yeah. conversation. Yeah. yeah. We appreciate yeah. you coming Thanks. out yeah. this way. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks it was for having us. Yeah. Cool. Go Dad Rock. Yeah. Dad Rock. Dad Rock. Mint Music. Dad Rock. High five. <laughs> and Dad Pods. High five. <laughs> Woo! If you enjoyed this episode, check out more episodes on any streaming service out there today, as well as our website www.themittenmusic.com You can also find playlists and concert listings there too. Check us out on social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram. 